Hey everyone, my name is Eric Masalski, and in this tutorial we're going to start the modeling process. Namely, we're just going to set up our viewports so it makes our modeling process that much easier. And we're going to do the first step in this modeling type. Now, we're not going to be using a box as a starting point for our head. Personally, I find modeling a head from a box a little difficult and a little bit confusing, mostly because I know the topology. I know how the edges have to flow. And so when you're starting from a box, sometimes it's difficult to get all the edges to flow in the same way right from the beginning. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a bit of a, an exploitation of the program to our benefit so that we can create our topology right from the beginning and have a much solider um, starting point for additional modeling. Okay, so if you open up the file that came with this tutorial, this really shouldn't be any surprise. This is basically the work that we did in the last tutorial. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up our viewports. Now, you can resize the viewports by clicking and dragging in between them, but we want something a little bit different. We basically want the left viewport here and the front viewport here. We could, in theory, drag those all the way up, but I prefer to do something a little bit more concrete. So, if we right-click on where it says Perspective, go down to Configure, and choose the Layout tab you'll see that we have a couple configuration options here. Each of these, you know, have their own benefits and uses. For our purpose, we're just going to use the two side by side. Now when we select it, you notice that it puts the top view on the left one and the front view on the right one. We can change this by clicking on the name and choosing a new viewport from the list. So we want front on the left, and then the left one in the right viewport. So once you have this set up, click OK. Alright, now what we want to do is we want to be able to see our textures on our planes. Right now we're in wireframe view, so we're just going to see straight through to the background. So to get this into smooth mode or shaded mode where we can actually see the textures, we're going to right click on our viewport name and just go down to Smooth plus Highlights. All right, there we go. We're now going to go back to that menu, right-click on the viewport name, and turn off Show Grid. Because we don't need it, it's just going to end up getting in our way. So let's do the same to the left. So right-click on its name, go to Smooth plus Highlights, and right-click again, and go to Show Grid. All right, now what we need to do is we want to zoom these in so that they fill up this viewport. Not going to do us much good at this size. So we can do this pretty quickly with the Zoom Extends All button down here in the lower right hand corner. If we click on that, it will zoom both of them in so that they fill the entire viewport uh, with a small border around it. Alright, so now that we have this, what we're going to do is we're going to start drawing our topology. All right. Now, at this point, we can make this one full screen just by clicking on our Maximize button or pressing Alt-W on the keyboard. All right. Now, the idea behind this process is we're going to draw each of our quads that we originally drew over in Photoshop we're then going to convert those in like a one-step process into a mesh that we will then fit to his profile. So, to begin with, go over to the Create tab. And instead of geometry, we want to go to Shapes. Now, within Shapes, we want to choose a line. And if you notice down here underneath Creation Method, 
I, we have two types. We have the initial type, which is corner, and then we have the drag type, which is bezier. Now, if we use this, and we accidentally click and drag, we end up getting a curve. Now, we really don't want a curve, because when this gets turned into a surface, it's going to put a lot of extra detail and a lot of extra triangles all along here. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we only create hard corners. All right. So on the right hand side, just make sure the initial type and the drag type are both set to corner. Now, let's zoom in a little bit. See onto this forehead. Make sure that you're in line mode. And click once to define a point, and then just keep on clicking for each additional point. Make your way all the way back to where you started, and you should get this dialog box. When it asks you if you want to close the spline, click yes. That finalizes that shape, and we can now move on to the rest of them. Now to make our life a little bit easier in the next step, what we're going to do is we're going to turn on snap so that whenever we approach an existing spline, we can snap to the corners that already exist. Now to do that, we first turn on position snap at the top of the screen, a little magnet with a three. Just left click on it. And we're going to right click on it to make sure that we have the correct options tagged. So if you're just starting max up for the first time, you'll default to grid points. But in this case, what we want is vertices. So just click on vertex, close the dialog, and we'll just move the cursor over one of these corners, left click, and then continue to draw. Now this may seem like a, a little bit of a tedious process, but once we get in over into the conversion stage, we're going to see how much time this can actually save you because you're defining your topology up front and you don't have to divide edges and move a lot of points around just to get it you know to where you need and this is very accurate or it follows your planning perfectly so you just want to keep on doing this over the entire surface and so now let's take a look at the same process a little bit further along. Okay, so I filled in a little bit more of the forehead, and now I'm working in the area around the eye. Now you may notice that I made a little mistake here. I didn't carry this one edge all the way through, and so I have a five-sided area. Now we can easily add detail later on. So feel free to approximate certain areas. We're later going to have to move each of these corners into their correct spots. So especially around the eyes here, if you can simplify the number of points that you're creating, the easier it'll make the next step And simplified too much for that last one. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our select tool, click on that one, delete it, go back to line, and then just pick up where we left off. Now, when you're drawing these lines, you may say accidentally click somewhere that you don't want. You could just get out of this by hitting escape and then deleting the object you just created, or you can hit backspace on the keyboard to remove the last point that you created. Okay, so we're just going to keep on working our way around here. And let's take a look a little bit further down the line. Okay, so here, right in the eye area, or teardrop area, tear duct, what we need is this broken into two. 
All right, so we got one. Goes like so. We have another one. It's like that. Now, you may find yourself in a situation where it's too, you know, hard to select the correct point. You know, see right there and there, it jumps pretty easily. So if you find that to be the case, what you can do is back to where, back at where we chose vertex for our snap type, you can go over to options and adjust the radius that it samples. Okay. So if it's too sensitive, just drop the number of pixels that it samples, and then you can go back and finish the job. Okay, so just keep on working your way through, and we're going to now take a look a little bit further down the line. Okay, so here we are again, and we're basically done with drawing all these individual quads. Now a couple things to notice. First, right here around the eye, I simplified it. I didn't end up drawing this line. Remember, we can add detail really easily later on. Also, I simplified this line coming out of the lip for the same reason. And then I also avoided filling in the nostrils. That's mostly because this is a very complicated shape and it'll get very confusing if we put in all these quads right now. So, this is the basic setup. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the next stage, which is converting this over into a surface. Okay, creating this into a surface, we're just going to take a really quick look at it. We'll cover it again in the next tutorial. But first we need to get out of our line creation mode. We can do that by hitting escape on the keyboard. Now we're going to select one of our shapes. Going to move over to the modify panel. And you see that it's just called a line. If we right click on the shape, and in the lower right hand quad menu, we convert to edible poly. When we click on that, it converts it into a surface. So what we have here is we basically just have a single polygon. Now, on the right-hand side, if we scroll to the area that says Edit Geometry, and underneath there, there's a tool called Attach with a little box next to it. Click on the little box. This will bring up a dialog box or a file or a object picker that allows us to select which objects we want to attach to this. So in this case we want to select all. These are all the individual lines that we created. So we click attach, does its magic, and then we have one complete surface. If we go up and right click on our viewport name and choose edged faces we can now see our topology. And so you can see that this is not a bad way to start because we already got a lot of our edges going in the right direction. The only problem is that it's completely flat. So what we're going to end up doing in the next tutorial is we're going to end up, one, fixing any problems that may have happened from the, from the surface conversion, and then two, giving it the necessary depth in our left viewport and actually giving it some volume. Okay, so if you have any questions, feel free to email me or post on the forums. Thank you very much.